Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So in this presentation, I am going to demonstrate the MISP installation and configuration in the Oracle VirtualBox Linux based system. So what is MISP? It is a threat intelligence platform uh, for sharing, storing and correlating indicators of compromise of uh, targeted attacks, threat intelligence, financial fraud information, vulnerability information, uh, etc. Okay, so now I am going to show the installation of MISP in this Linux system. Okay, let's follow the tutorial. I will share the document in the description part. Okay, so first just copy uh, this command and do the update and the upgrade process. So I have enabled the NAT adapter. The first adapter, network adapter is NAT and the second adapter is host only adapter. So through the NAT, the Linux is able to connect with the net public network. An update and upgrade process is taking place now. The next step, um, install the MySQL database client. So MySQL is a database system. So the MISP needs uh, some sort of uh, database system. Okay, so we are installing that part now. And then we go on to the automated script. There are two ways by which we can install the MSP, MISP, but this one is a very simple way. Um, but in the production environment, in the organizations, we have to go for manual options. So let's uh, go for the automated script here. So in the middle, it was asking me to whether to create a user <coughs> named MISP, and I have opted yes. So a user named MISP will be created. The installation of MISP is over, but it took almost 20 to 25 minutes. Okay, so you have to be patient enough. In the middle, it would ask whether to create a user account. Okay, and uh, you have to say yes. Okay. So MISP installed, access here, user admin dot test password is admin the following files are created and need other protection or removal and uh, and cat permission denied home ms authentication key dot text okay so these are some of the basic things uh, which is given to us okay, by the msp so uh, let me store that in the notepad maybe that we need in the future. Okay, so I enlarge, enlarge. Just copy and paste these things from the MISP. Let's see what we have to do next. 
so these are the con uh, firewall rules okay so copy and paste it firewall rules for the tcp port number 80 http traffic and then https And finally, the firewall policy status. Inactive status inactive. Okay. Just let me confirm whether this inactive is it acceptable or not. Let me check it. So basically inactive is not an issue because the firewalls um, uh, the firewalls basically is not uh, active so no need to, this these rules will not uh, be applicable so we can skip this part okay now let's try to access the misp okay so we have installed the MISP in the Bodhi Linux system and the IP address of the Bodhi Linux is uh, 1.30 for the host only adapter. So let me open the browser. Okay, and uh, HTTP. ATP 30. So advanced proceed. So it is asking some credentials, and already we have copied the credentials. But let me see which credentials basically we have to use. Uh, so default credentials are admin add admin dot test and admin so these credentials in fact it came finally after the msp installation you can notice that here admin dot test and admin so these are the default credentials admin so very good actually confirm with current password so it is asking us to change the password so we give some password like p at ssw 0 rd p at ssw 0 rd and the current password is admin so submit password length requirement not met uh, make sure you need the minimum password length complexity requirement so it is asking so it should be giving us the rules right so what we do is like um, a capital b c d e f one two three four dollar a capital b c d e f one two three four dollar uh, the default is at me what is this so shall we give admin one two three dollar Admin one two three dollar admin and again it is giving us some trouble. Let me figure out what is the password policy for this MISP website. 
so actually uh, i was struggling a bit uh, regarding the password okay so finally um like the chat gpt gave me the complex password okay and i was able to give the new complex password so let me note down this also okay so this is a password to log in into the misp so now we have finished the installation part so let me share the document with you so that you can also do the installation so so we have finished up to the step number five so create an organization so go to the administration add organization okay generate the uid okay um, and this ad keys is very important okay so let me figure out where is it so this is administration and go to add organization so it is asking some organization identifier brief organization identifier uh, so basically fill in the details so what kind of details okay let me give like only technique Technique. So it is asking us to enter the UID. Okay, generate the UID. So this is the UID. Just copy this. Okay. Uh, so these are optional play pins. The brief description. University. Bad user accounts to. Domains, the line, line substituted, enter a list of domain names to enforce when creating users. So I think these are optional fields, okay? So let me uh, okay, submit. Okay, then okay. So we have finished the step number five, I mean six, create an organization. Enable default CRUD feeds, navigate to sync actions feeds, local default feed metadata. So here uh, you can find sync actions feeds and uh, load default feed metadata so we click this okay very good so it is we are able to find the uh, intelligence feeds <coughs> okay so these uh, feeds basically contains the indicator of compromise so when we give any like for example what's what we are going to do is next we are going to integrate this with the wazoo the wazoo is going to collect the data from the agent like Linux or Windows agent and that log data is okay sent to the MSPI and uh, it is compared with the MSPI uh, intelligence feed to find whether any IOC indicator of compromise where, whether any attack signature is matching with the uh, the log data so if it is matching Okay, then it uh, it proves that this is possibly an uh, intrusion or uh, attack from the adversary. For example, let's say, um, okay, a yeah, system from agent system, yeah, DNS query is going to a domain. Okay, and this um, event is picked up by the Wazoo agent. And that data goes to the Wazoo Server Manager. The Wazoo Server Manager, okay, send this information to the MSPI, MSPI Intelligence Feed. Okay, compares this uh, data event data with the MSPI Intelligence Feed. 
and find that this particular domain, the query to this particular domain, this domain itself is malicious. So it is a, it is a, a indicator of compromise. Already there is evidence that this particular domain is malicious. So it uh, returns the response to the WASO that this particular domain is malicious and it gives the metadata about that uh, IOC indicator of compromise. So by this way, the MSPA is very useful um, uh, repository which would help us to detect the indicator of compromise for any event in our system. Okay, so now let's uh, move on to the next step. Select feed uh, and click. Enable catching for selected, enable selector. So we move on to the next step, basically very important is go to the administration, list the users, click uh, the pencil icon to edit the users, okay, scroll the authentication key section, click show authentication key, um, okay, so administration list users, so we have to go to the administration list the users okay so there is a user admin at admin.test and just now we fixed the password and uh, list authentication keys so this is a key basically very good okay so this key actually we need when we uh, integrate the MSPI with the wazoo so this is the key and why is it like this i want the plain text so add the authentication key so download user profile and let's say this is the authentication key view the authentication key then edit the authentication key delete okay so this is the view authentication key uh, so let's go to the edit option So basically this key is very important, but I would uh, show you how we have to use this particular key when we integrate the WASU with the MISP and uh, whether the way it is given here is, is it enough or like we have to convert into some sort of uh, readable format that I will explore now. So, uh, so that's it from my side okay basically uh, this is the way we uh, configure the MSPA in the Linux based system so in the next continuation part okay so this is actually a WASU agent also this system is a WASU agent in the same system I have installed the MSPA and we are able to access the MSPA dashboard through this um, URL and uh, we were able to change the password and also we saw like how to uh, access the uh, feeds okay and also we saw like how to find the list of users and how to see the authentication keys okay so next step would be like how to uh, what are the possible steps to integrate this MSPI with the WASU okay uh, so that's all I have thank you very much